Hello and good evening CSI 258 section 847 students for the second eight week term of the spring 2015 semester at Anne Arundel Community College. This evening's video tutorial is going to be on packet tracer activity 4.4.1.2 which is the skills integration challenge for chapter 4 which focused on frame relay. And so what we did in chapter 3 was talk about leased lines and dedicated circuits with PPP and HDLC for our encapsulation approaches and now what we're going to do is we're going to expand upon that and integrate a lot of our uh, frame relay tasks from chapter 4 into this activity and these are some of the most exciting activities by far because it allows us to take all of our skills that we've kind of collected so far throughout the three courses or throughout the four courses and to put those into play. So let's go ahead and let's jump in here. Um, router 1. So let's go ahead and start on Router 1. We've got a series of configuration tasks that are going to be required in Router 1. Let's drop that down a little there. And we've got a significantly larger font here than normal. So it should be easy to see. And so let's go ahead and go from user exec into privilege exec with the enable command and then into global config. So our first task says to configure R1 to use the point to point protocol with CHAP on the link to the internet. So ISP is the router host name. The password for CHAP is Cisco. So what do we need to do first? Let's go ahead and do a do show controller on serial 000. And what do we see here? Let's make this just a little larger and we'll come move that out of the way. So we can see that we're the DTE side, the data terminal equipment side, right? And the clocks have been detected. And what that means is the clock rate is being set on the service provider side of this connection. Let's also go ahead and do a show interface serial 000. Oops, sorry, do show interface serial 000. And let's see what it shows for our encapsulation. And as you would expect, the default on Cisco serial links is HDLC, and specifically it's C, lowercase c for Cisco HDLC, which is the proprietary version of HDLC that Cisco created. They took the open standard, the ISO standard, that was called HDLC, added their secret sauce, and created their own proprietary HDLC. So if you're not doing HDLC on both ends of your connection, you're not going to have your interfaces uh, in an up up state, right? So we're actually going to change that right now. If I do a do show IP interface brief, let's take a look and see and that's serial 001. You can see that we're in an up down state right now. And if you've been watching uh, the videos from chapter four as well as chapter three, you'll remember specifically in chapter three where this is 99% of the time if we're using uh, PPP encapsulation, this is gonna have something to do with authentication if we're trying to do authentication because what this means is, it means that the link control protocol, LCP, which controls the authentication negotiation between the two interfaces is unable to make it to the completed open state so that the network control protocol can come in. And so again, remember when you do the show interface, or I'm sorry, show IP interface brief, that when we see the first status, that's our layer one status. The second is our layer two. So the link control protocol has been unable to complete its tasks. So let's go ahead and help the link control protocol out here. We'll go into serial 001, and we're going to say NCAP PPP. And you'll notice that we've got three choices here, frame relay, HDLC, and PPP. We're going to be using frame relay a little later on. So I'm going to go ahead right now and say NCAP PPP. And we're still down, right? Because again, if I do a do show IP interface brief, we're still in a down state at layer two, and that's because we need to get our authentication sorted out here. So what I'm going to do is tell the interface that we're going to go ahead and do PPP. And actually, let's go ahead and see if it'll come up here, because it should come up. Uh, we're being challenged, so let's go ahead, and we really only need it on one side. And the DCE side is typically where the PPP authentication CHAP command is run. So right now, we're receiving 
uh, chap challenges from you know the quote unquote the internet cloud there so it'll be the router on the other side of our internet connection which is going to be right up here so I'm going to say host name and ISP and we're just going to use a simple password and that is going to be Cisco and I'm sorry <laughs> host name username username ISP and password of Cisco and I'm going to hit enter and let's see if this is going to bring the connection up for us and there you go right so I'm going to leave the um, the PPP authentication chap command off here and, and see if if it'll allow us to continue to move forward and, and score maximum points because again typically the use case is you only need to have the PPP authentication chap command on one side in order to do the authentication now there's nothing wrong with having it on both sides it's just that that is not the typical use case so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna say do show IP interface brief let's confirm that we are in an up and up state and can I ping my neighbor so it would be 209.165.200 oh, sorry dot 201 dot one and so there you go so if I were to say do show uh, interface serial zero zero one we would come back here now let's take a look we're doing PPP so there's the encapsulation PPP you can see the link control protocol is in an open state and what am I running at that link control protocol level I'm running the IP control protocol and the CDP control protocol okay so we've got our PPP established between router 1 and the ISP it says configure a default route to the internet use the exit interface so I'm gonna say IP route and this is where we're gonna to go to our quad oops, sorry we'll go to our quad zeros here and it says to use the exit interface and that's gonna be that same interface that we just worked with with PPP serial 001 and that's okay because it is a point-to-point -point interface so there aren't going to be performance impacts because the only place that the traffic can go when it's exiting that interface is to the other end of that link all right so now we're going to configure a static route to the LAN on R4 so 101200 so I'm going to say IP route and so my route to get to the 10.1.200.0 it's a slash 24 how am I going to get there and it says to use the next hop IP address. Well, if I'm on router one here, my next hop IP is gonna be through the frame relay cloud to the serial 000 interface on router four, which is gonna be 10.0.0.4 from the address table. So we'll go ahead and we'll enter in that route there. And for the next task, it's actually asking us it says configure EIGRP so we're gonna say router EIGRP the autonomous system number is gonna be 100 it says advertise the entire 10.0.0.0 slash 8 subnet so network 10.0.0.0 since that's the default we're gonna be able to go ahead and leave it just like that and then what we're gonna do now is no auto summary now no auto summary is typically the default and you can tell it's the default because if we set it and then we take a look at our EIGRP configuration here you'll notice it doesn't say no auto dash summary and typically when uh, when you're making configuration changes on Cisco routers if it is the default setting and a great example of this is port security so when I type in switch port port security on a switch and then I say switch port port security maximum one that doesn't show up in the configuration because that's the default right and so this is what I'm talking about real quickly here we'll get on to a real Cisco Cisco switch I've got a 3750 here and so again if I were to say do show IP interface brief oops sorry just show IP interface brief control a, so we'll pull this back so again so six, all right. So we'll use six, uh, six slash zero. Whoops. So if I say interface fast ethernet six dot zero dot six, 
if I say switch port port security and I turn port security on well it's a dynamic port so switch port mode access now let's try that port security command so if I say switch port port security and I do a do show run interface uh, at fast Ethernet 606 you can see port security is on now the default is to only allow one MAC address if I say switch port port security MAC address oops sorry maximum maximum and this is where I put the maximum in so if I say maximum one that's the default so when I say do show run fast Ethernet 606 it's not there because again that's the default and Cisco is very tricky with this they love to ask you questions or show you output and maybe they'll show you output like this and say how many Ma what is the maximum number of MAC addresses allowed on this interface with port security enabled and they're expecting you to know that the default is one and again it doesn't show up here because it's the default and so we're seeing the same thing over here when we type in no auto summary so that is the default with the 15 code and we are running I believe 15 1 where are we at here yep so 15.1.4 m4 and so it's always a good idea to check though to make sure that auto summary is off so how what's another way I could check if I said do show run and we look at the EIGRP section right we see it's not there but how can I confirm it how about do show IP protocols because this is going to show us the protocols that are running here's our EIGRP entry shows us our K values are at the defaults but more importantly the automatic summarization has been disabled right and you can see auto, automatic address summarization, there's nothing. We've got maximum paths four, and that's for equal cost or unequal cost load balancing. But again, the automatic summarization has been disabled. So that's a great way to check, show IP protocols. All right, so let's get back on task here. And we've got both of our, we've advertised and propagate a default route. So how do we propagate a default route with EIGRP? With OSPF, we would say default information originate. However, with EIGRP, the first thing that we want to do is we create the static route, which we did. So you can see we have our static default route pointing out of the serials or pointing out to the serial 001 interface. And then all I need to do is redistribute that static. And so now that static route is going to be redistributed throughout the EIGRP autonomous system to the other EIGRP member routers. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and configure full mesh frame relay. And this is a little different from the last activity. So Packet Tracer 4.2.2.6 had us create a series of point to point sub interfaces. And if you remember, the sub interface, what it does is it's going to establish one PVC connection to another uh, to another physical interface or a sub interface, and it acts and behaves just like a normal point to point connection would, right? So just like the point to point connection here between router one and the internet, that's how a point to point sub interface frame relay uh, setup is going to function. However, from the first packet tracer activity where we had to add the broadcast word in and the reason we had to add that in there is it becomes extremely important because when you say broadcast right with the frame relay command what we're actually saying is broadcast when we put it at the end of that frame relay command it actually means multicast and broadcast and so this is where when you're doing different types of routing, uh, dynamic routing protocols, where this can become a challenge if you're not doing the point-to-point -point interfaces. So again, the point-to-point -point interfaces, they act just like regular, or I'm sorry, point-to-point sub-interfaces uh, with frame relay act just like your regular dedicated circuit lines do with your serial interfaces. However, when you're doing multi-point connections right which is what we're going to be doing here we're going to take an interface and we're going to create sort of a full mesh between all of these that's when and you'll notice they're all in the same IP subnet when we did the point-to-point -point interfaces sure it addresses um, 
the split horizon rule and it takes care of not having to add in the broadcast key uh, option to our config however you need a dedicated subnet for each of the sub interface connections right so if we had sub interfaces between router 1 and router 2 we would need one IP subnet and then if I did another sub interface here between router 1 and router 4 that would be a totally different subnet but as you can see here, when we're doing a full mesh, right, and basically just kind of doing a multi-point setup, but we're not using sub-interfaces, then the, what's going to end up happening is we're going to have to use the broadcast keyword, but we can put everybody into this same slash 29 subnet. So let's go ahead and take a look at that now. So. It says configure full mesh frame relay. So I'm on router one, so let's exit out here, and I'm gonna jump into uh, serial interface 000, because that's my interface that inter that is uh, connecting me into this frame relay cloud. So configure frame relay encapsulation. So again, we're familiar with this command, right? Encapsulation, we've done PPP, we've done HDLC. So now we're gonna do frame relay. And I'm going to do the question mark here because you'll notice it says configure a map to each of the other routers. The PVC to R4 uses IETF encapsulation. So we could maybe guess or say, you know, for the sake of argument that, hey, router 4, maybe that could be a Juniper router. It could be some other vendor's router and it's going to be using IETF encapsulation. Uh, with the frame relay setup. However, only router 4 is using IETF. So if I were to set it here, every connection I have would be doing IETF. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold off on this because in the full mesh setup, I'm going to go ahead and declare it uh, based off of the static mapping statement. And that's where I'm going to put in IETF. And so basically the use case is we're connected through the frame relay cloud we're going to say that r4 is maybe a juniper router maybe an hp arista whatever and all of the other routers one two and three those are cisco so we only have that one exception so here's how we're going to deal with that so i'm going to say in cap frame relay and then once we have the encapsulation set we're going to go ahead and um, create our maps right and so how do we create those frame relay maps? Well, we're going to start out with frame relay, and then it's going to lead to our map command, and we're going to map the IP. And so what IP are we going to map? Let's start out, if we're on router 1 here, let's go ahead and start out with router 2. So if I was going to be mapping over to router 2, I would simply say, and if we come up here, you can see you've got the table the addressing table here and then more importantly we have the Delsey table which tells us about the Delsey so I would say 10.0.0 dot and is it going to be dot one or dot two well I'm mapping over to router two so the way I like to read this statement and try to keep it straight because remember the Delsey value that's about to follow here which is 102 that is local to router one so I like to look at this as my frame relay map over to IP address 10.0.0.2 is going to use Delsey 102. And I do the same thing with the when you do static routes, right? So my IP route to this network is going to be through either this interface or the next hop IP. So again, you can think of it as my frame relay map to get me over to IP 10.0.0.2 is going to use Delsey 102. Now, here's where we have a choice to make. And this is where we need the broadcast key keyword so that broadcasts should be forwarded. And remember, that's going to include multicasts as well. Because remember, EIGRP is 224.0.0.10, and that's where the hello packets are going to be going, uh, going to be sent to. So we're going to go ahead and say broadcast. And if I do the question mark, you can see here, I can do Cisco encapsulation or IETF. Well, Cisco is the default, so I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. Because remember, router 2 
is not doing IETF. So now let's go ahead and do router three, and that's gonna be 103. And now we come to router four. So I'm gonna say four, my Delsi is 104. Again, I'm simply referencing this uh, frame relay Delsi table up here for router one. We'll do two and three next. And what we've got something different here with router four. Remember, in order to bring the adjacency up, we need to make sure that we are doing IETF encapsulation, right? So we're gonna add the IETF keyword to the end of the router four statement. All right, so now let's go ahead and jump over to, oh, and I forgot one thing. We've gotta get the LMI type is ANSI. So frame relay, LMI type, and if I do a question mark, you see we have three choices here. ANSI, Cisco, which, yep, you guessed it, that's the default, and then Q933A. So it wants us to use ANSI. So we're gonna throw ANSI in there. And now we're gonna type, and there you go. You can see that the line protocol state has changed to up on serial 000. And that's because when we change that LMI type, right, the local management interface, when we change that LMI type, that allowed us to negotiate our state with the frame relay cloud. And it's this cloud right here, and this could be frame relay switches, could be Cisco routers in there that are acting as frame relay switches. But again, that LMI type, it was critical that we have that in there so that we bring everything up. So now I'm gonna save my configuration off on router one. Let's slide down here because we're about to jump on to router two. So we'll move this over here for router two. And make this a little larger here. All right, so now on router two, it wants us to configure EIGRP. So we're gonna go from user exec into privilege exec with the enable command. From privilege exec mode, we're gonna go to global config with configure terminal. And then I'm gonna say router EIGRP and my autonomous system number needs to match, right? In order for me to participate in the autonomous system. All right, so router EIGRP 100, we're gonna do no, oops, no auto summary. And it wants us to simply advertise that entire 10 network. And since the default mask is uh, for the 10 dot is going to be 255.0.0.0. That's the default. That's why it doesn't show up when we place it in there. So if I were to say 255, 255, 255.0, and then do show run, I'm sorry, actually, that, that is going to show up. So I apologize. That should show up, and it automatically flipped it into the wildcard mask for us. You can see we have these two statements here. So now I need to go ahead and pull that out. That was not what I intended. So if I say do show run, we'll see that the network statement is in there. So if I said no network 10.0.0.0 and I said uh, network 10.0, we'll say 10.1.0.0 and then 255, 255, 255, let's say 252. So since it's not the default, right, which is slash eight, it's automatically gonna drop in the wildcard mask and do, do the wildcard uh, calculation for us because we just put the subnet mask in there, right? But when it's the default mask for the network statement you enter, right, it's class A, then it doesn't put the wildcard mask behind it. All right, so let's go ahead and pull that out and we'll get back on track here. And so we're just basically gonna say, and where are we at? network and I'm gonna pull that out because that is not what we wanted and we're gonna leave it at that so okay we've got our network statement back in there so we're good to go and do not send EIGRP messages out the LAN interface so we're gonna passive gig zero zero which is the LAN interface uh, off of router two so let's do a check here so we did the AS number we've got the advertisement correct uh, we disabled automatic summarization and we've got passive. So now let's get into our EIGRP configuration, which is going to be on serial 000. So again, the same steps. Encapsulation, we're going to do frame relay. Now I could pick IETF here, but I'm not going to because again, in this full mesh setup, the multiple PVCs we've got, only the one going to R4 is really going to require IETF. So I'm going to leave the in cap frame relay the way it is and now we're going to go ahead and configure maps to each of the other routers so we'll basically start out with frame relay map 
So my frame relay map to get over to router one's IP is going to be through or using Delsi 201. So if I do the question mark here, you can see we definitely want broadcast because again, this is a full mesh. It is not a point to point sub interface, right? So we're gonna have to use that broadcast uh, keyword in there. So let's pull this back up. So we didn't go to two because that's us, but we are gonna go to three. And now we're gonna go over to four. So we'll change this to four. And what do we need here for four? Well, we're not using Cisco encapsulation with four. We're gonna be using IETF. Now you'll notice if I do a do show um, frame relay, LMI, you can see here that the LMI type right now is Cisco because again, that's our default. We've got some messages queued up here, but we don't have an adjacency yet. So remember, the last thing that we need to do is the frame relay LMI type, I need to flip that over to ANSI. And after we do that, we should have, and there it is. And in fact, take a look at that. We know we've got connectivity now through the frame relay cloud over to 10001. And why is that? EIGRP was configured over there and we've already configured router one. So our adjacency is up. So if I say do show IP route, are we picking up that default static route? We sure are. And there it is. So our default route that we're picking up from EIGRP is via 10.001, so that's gonna be router one. So let's see, if I were to say do ping 209, 165, 201, 225, can we get out yet through that default route? I can't. Oh, I'm sorry, and I should be able to. And if I get the right IP address in there, I will be able to. <laughs> All right, so there we go. So we've got uh, connectivity through to the web server. So R2 is complete. Let's do a write mem on R2, and now let's pull up R3. And we're gonna lose a little real estate here. I'm gonna drag this up as high as I can there. And let's pull R3 up. And what are we gonna say for R3? So it's gonna be very similar to what we just did for R2. So we're gonna go from user exec to privilege exec, exec with the enable command. And then we're gonna to go to global config with the configure terminal. And the first thing we wanna do is configure EIGRP. So router EIGRP, we need to have the same autonomous system number. Remember, the EIGRP AS, autonomous system number, is not locally significant like the OSPF process ID. So in order for the EIGRP routers to all be in the same autonomous system and to share internal EIGRP routes with each other, the AS number needs to match. Okay, so let's go ahead and wrap up our configuration of EIGRP here. So we're gonna say no auto summary, and we're gonna add our network statement in, the same as we did on router two. And that's pretty much it. We're gonna passive the gig 00 interface. And then we're done with our EIGRP config. However, do show IP EIGRP neighbors. No neighbors yet, right? We gotta get that frame relay configured. So let's say interface serial 000, frame relay and, oops, sorry about that. So we're gonna say encapsulation, encapsulation, and we're gonna to wanna to use frame relay. All right, so we've got the frame relay end cap set. Now let's get our map statements in there. So frame relay map. So my frame relay map to get to IP 10.0.0.1, which is router one, is gonna use Delsi 301. And we're gonna do the question mark and you got it. We've gotta get that broadcast keyword in there if we are hoping for EIGRP, EIGRP to work. In fact, let me go ahead. I'll leave the broadcast keyword off for router one and router two, and that would be 302, and then we'll do router four, 304, and remember, router four is broadcast and it's IETF. So now I'm gonna go ahead and say frame relay LMI type ANSI, 
And what do you think? Are we going to have any EIGRP adjacencies form? So the serial interface has come up, right? And we've got the new adjacency up, and I'm wondering if this may be something to do with the packet tracer. So do show run. And we're missing our broadcast statements, so I'm surprised that that came up. Aha, and there we go. So the initial adjacency came up, but then what happened? It's going to go down because it's retrying with router 1 and router 2. And so it's not working. And actually, did I miss see that when that came, whoops, when that came back up? Was it, I thought it was only... Yeah, one and two came up, but you see what's happening here, right? And this is actually a, a really nice thing to see because we can now witness what happens when that broadcast keyword is not there. And it's basically that these, these interfaces are now flapping, the routes are gonna be flapping. So if I come over to router, uh, router two and say show IP EIGRP neighbors, you can see that the only neighborship I have right now is with router one. I don't see router three. And I'm trying to catch it here to see if it's even gonna... You'll notice even when it said the adjacency uh, was up with router one, and I'm on router, I'm sorry, with uh, routers one and two, it's not registering here, right? And so this is what happens when you don't have the broadcast keyword as part of your configuration. So let's pull router three back up and it's gonna to continue to flap like this where it's gonna say the adjacency is up and then it's down and then it's up and then it's down. All right, so let's go ahead and sort this out. Do show run and we're gonna pull back up the, there was four, so here's two. So we'll say broadcast on two. Oh, so the address is already in the map. So let's pull it off first. So I'll come back here and say no frame relay map. And now the time limit is definitely exceeded for, try to get this up quickly here to 302. We'll get here and we'll go to the end of the line. So you can see we're on router three. And so now I'm gonna say, and now you'll notice where is it going up and down? It's only up and down with router one. I've removed the map statement, but now I'm gonna add that map statement back in. I'm gonna say broadcast, and let's see what happens now. And it looks like it may have already been do show run. And hopefully we didn't break this here. So it is definitely not in, or it may actually already be in there. See if it's not going to allow me to get that back in here. So frame relay map IP 10.0.0.2.2.302 and then broadcast. And address is already in our frame relay map. So here's what we'll do. So I'm going to do a write mem. We'll do a quick reload here. And sometimes this happens where trying to demonstrate things with packet tracer. Packet tracer is not uh, not very um, amicable when it comes to trying to demonstrate things. So we're going to go into interface serial 000 and we're going to say frame relay map IP. And so how do I get to the 10002? I use Delsi 302 and we're going to make it broadcast. Right? And then there you go. So the adjacency is now up. So do show IP EIGRP neighbors. And now we have an adjacency with router 1 and router 2. So do show run. Let me see what we've got under. So router one we still need to deal with here. So no frame relay map IP 10.0.0.1 to Delsi 301. And I'm going to add that back in now with the broadcast keyword. And let's see if it says complains at all. Do show run. All right, so there we go. So we've got router one in there, properly configured router two and router four. All right, and we've got our LMI type as ANSI. So if I were to now say do show IP EIGRP neighbors, you can see that our neighbor relationships are up. Let's check on router two. Do, oh, sorry, let's see, show IP EIGRP neighbors. 
and my adjacencies with router one and three, and then router one, show IP, EI, GRP, neighbors, is router two and three. So we look good so far. So now we're down to router four. And router four is our IETF router. So let's go ahead here on router four and go from user exec to privilege exec. And then in the global config, I'm going to say do show run. We're going to take a quick sneak peek here. So there's our LAN interface. There's our serial link. You can see we have an IP address, but no frame relay map statement set yet. So let's go ahead and knock this out. So configure a static route for each of the LANs on router two and router three. Use the next top IP. So static route, so IP route. So what is my IP route and the LAN behind router two is 10.1.100.0. So my route to get to the 10.100 or 10.1.100.0 network and it wants the next top IP is going to be through the frame relay cloud, oops, sorry, to router two. And then the same thing. So the network behind router three, which is 150, 10, 1, 150. Pull this back up here. So my route to get to the 10.1.150 network, a slash 24, is going to be going to the next top IP of 10.0.0.3 through the frame relay cloud. Okay. So we've got our static routes. It says configure a default route to router one using the next top IP address. So IP route, we should be very familiar with the default route by now. And the next top IP of router one is 10.0.0.1. All right, so configure full mesh frame relay. So let's go ahead and jump into interface serial 000 where we're going to say encapsulation frame relay. Now, router four uses IETF. So since everything on router four is gonna use IETF, we're gonna go ahead and say IETF. All right, um, what's our next step here? So the frame relay encapsulation using IETF, we just did configure a map to each of the other routers. So we've got our table right up here, and we'll just do them in order, one, two, and then three. So frame relay, map, IP. So my frame relay map to get over to IP 10.0.0.1 is going to use DELSI 401. And I'll do the question mark here, and you can see you've got the IETF option, the Cisco option, we've already declared it on the overall interface, and then broadcasts, right? So. Are we doing EIGRP? We are not. So, but we're going to use the broadcast keyword. So then we've got our next frame relay map statement is going to be over to router two. And then the next frame relay statement is to router three. Right? So there we go. And even though router four do show run, let's see, I didn't see EIGRP in here even though we did statics yeah we did statics and we may have been able to get away with not putting the broadcast keyword in there but I'm gonna go ahead and leave that broadcast keyword in there because you might uh, at some point be doing uh, EIGRP in a dynamic routing protocol so we can leave that in there um, what do we have here we've got a map and the LMI type so we're gonna go ahead and say frame relay LMI type and the LMI type is going to be ANSI and so it looks like we are about five points short so I am going to have to go back let's do a right mem here I'm going to have to go back and now I'm trying to remember where it was ah yeah the uh, PPP authentication so let's come up here to router one do show run so oops, sorry so we'll do a show run and let's take a look at that serial 001 interface. So remember, I did the NCAP PPP, and we've got connectivity. Connectivity is working because the typical use case with uh, CHAP authentication is that the provider is going to be challenging us with that CHAP authentication, and we're going to be responding, right? The typical use case is not where we also challenge the provider. However, there's nothing wrong with setting it up like that. There are use cases for that. And I think that that's probably where we're missing our points. So let's go into interface serial 001, and I'm gonna go ahead and add in 
whoops, sorry about that. So PPP authentication chap. And you can see that it now says that the interface is up and that was actually a five pointer. So that was the one step where it came up, we had connectivity and everything worked great, but we're gonna go ahead and add it in because clearly that's what the exercise is looking for. However, keep in mind that that is not the typical use case. All right, well, that wraps up Packet Tracer Skills Integration Challenge 4.4.1.2. And again, these are uh, some of the, the best exercises where you really get to take all of the tools in your Cisco CCNA kit so far and put those tools to use to solve some complex problems. All right, thank you for watching, and I hope this has cleared up any confusion you might have had, and I will see you guys all on Saturday.